there is an exciting announcement uh, from the RACGP about the KFP exam. There is actually going to be a format change. Um, it will remain paper-based, but the questions are moving away from the short answer to multiple selection questions or MSQs, uh, similar, more, more similar to the AKT for those that have sat that one already, uh, with questions being answered by a answer grid. So you'll be colouring the little circles, and boy do I think this is actually a really positive thing. Um, for those who have already sat the KFP exam, condolences. <laughs> um, but also you'll, you'll know that just surviving that exam is 90% is of the work uh, and the hand cramping, the writing for four hours straight under very stressful circumstances is gruelling in and of itself. Uh, and there is a lot of technique to that exam, not necessarily reflecting if you're a good or bad doctor. Now, um, the previous format was 26 cases with three to four questions per case. This will be replaced by 70, seven zero scenarios with a question for each scenario. Uh, so you can bet our ACGP are busy writing these scenarios as we speak. The time will remain at four hours, so there won't be any changes there. Uh, and on the RACGP website, they have uh, kindly provided two sample questions. This is one of the uh, questions as provided. So you can see that really the formatting here is very, very similar to that of uh, the KFP stem that you would classically get, um, and very similar as well to the AKT, probably a little bit more fleshed out. Uh, with, of course, here we can see lots and lots of uh, different uh, options there. Now, um, probably some things to highlight for those that haven't set the KFP yet is that these still have that what are the most appropriate next steps, select four from the following list. Uh, so this is a four answer multiple selection question with a mix of investigations and management options. Uh, so the patient is presenting with a subacute, slowly worsening scrotal pain, mild dysuria without discharge, uh, a low grade temperature and unilateral localized testicular tenderness. So the most likely diagnosis here is going to be epididymolochitis. Um, the subacute presentation and patient age make the acute testicular torsion unlikely. And whilst an STI is less likely to cause, it can't be definitively excluded from the information here. And the pain's not severe. So uh, if we look at the answers, uh, if we well, let's try and get them on screen. There we go. Um, so the correct answers here relate to rational initial investigations to determine the causative organism and provision of a simple analgesia. So antibiotics can be initiated once the causative organism is known uh, and there is no imminent emergency to warrant urgent referral. So you can see we're still sticking, sticking with it. Similar kind of um, the answers are what you would expect to see if you're writing them out, if that makes sense. You'll note they do have drug doses here. I'm uncertain the implications of that. Um, my personal thoughts, though, yeah, and the big one that I think is going to save a lot of people a lot of pain is that there's no negative marking for incorrect answers. Uh, and I, I think that's something that would frustrate a lot of people on the old KFP format um, if you were overcoding or had other things. But I do want to for, um, point out there is still that 0.35% um, deduction from your overall score as a penalty if you still provide too many answers. So in that last scenario, it asks for four responses. If you circle five boxes, you lose 0.35% from your overall mark. And as we've spoken about before, it's incredible how quickly that um, adds up as well. Uh, now, it's possible, and there's kind of some, some unclear wording, but it's hinted there may be some weighted answers as well. So some answers still might be worth more marks than others, uh, similar to previous KFP. And there's an interesting um, phrasing here, so I've copied and pasted it directly, but due to the difference in the number of responses requested per question, the KFP questions contain variable marks that contribute equally to the final mark. Each question is worth 1.43% of the overall score. Uh, so lots of questions, lots of opportunities to get through, though. <coughs> of course, this is the big question here. If you book to sit the 2025.1 KFP, do you defer and sit the 2025.2 MSQ format? So they're still keeping that same format for the 2025-1 exam. Uh, and I, I think this is something we're going to have to look into. And um, once we complete this CCE series, I will be going back to KFP questions as well in the usual format. And that'll be something that I'll be exploring with the people that join in on that. Uh, so not necessarily relevant to you who are planning on sitting the CCE shortly, but for those that haven't set the KFP yet, this is definitely something to have on your radar. Start looking into, start thinking about.